U.S. federal regulations to define a strategy to explore. Uh, what it is? Microphone. Ah, okay. Thank you. To explore the technical implementations, we will discuss the testing and the quality insurance, and also touch upon the continuous uh, improvement. Um, at the end of the session, I will take the opportunity to answer to your uh, questions, if you have some. So let's begin the journey into mastering the payroll localization uh, for the United States of America. Um, to, beginning, to begin, uh, we have to define what is a payroll localization. It's the process of adapting ODU uh, to meet the specific requirements for a particular country, a region, or a state. Why ODU? Well, it's a robust and highly customizable ERP platform, so it makes it an ideal choice for businesses of all sizes to uh, implement their payroll processes according to their uh, specific needs. To illustrate this, let's look at how the flow looks like. When you jump on the employee scheduler view, this is the kind of things that you could face in real life. Here, you see that all the records are generated on the fly when you land on a period. And in this case, we are inside the month of October. If you go back in time, the work entries are generated automatically. And it allows you to recreate all the payslip history in batches if you want to install the payroll, the payroll application before and test and compare the result with your uh, current uh, platform. You can see that we have 11 employees that are working on a five days per week basis. One employee is working uh, four days per week, there are holes on Wednesday, and one employee is working one day per week. You can also spot some orange uh, arrows on the boxes, and it means that uh, those periods are either in error or in conflict. It means that, um, for example, there is a time of request that has been set, and it's not approved or refused yet, and uh, the system cannot decide by himself what to do. So, the payroll officer, uh, officer has to take the decision to confirm or refuse the, pay sli uh, the time off, sorry, according to the internal policy. And the system cannot decide it by himself. So when you click on a card in error, you get a pop-up with the information about the period and a link to the time of request if you need to modify it, and also two shortcuts to approve or refuse the time off in a single click. right? When it's approved, for example, you see that the work entries are not in error anymore, and the color has changed as the work entry is not an attendance, but a legal pet time off in that case. You can see that the generate pay sleep button on the, on the top left is not clickable yet because we still have some conflicts to solve. Let's say that we approve all the requests, the time of request in this case. Now you see that everything is approved, and you have the generate pay sleep button that is available on the um, the, the calendar view to compute all the payslip for the month in a single batch. Um, as you see, we have a batch that contains uh, thir 13 payslips. And if you are a payroll officer, you can check that everything is OK, uh, validate the payslip one by one, or uh, validate them all at once with the batch. Um, OK, so here we have the payslips. You can see that on the payslip, you have the cover period, a link to the employee contract, and also a link to the payroll structure that is used to compute it. Here, it's a regular pay. Uh, you can see that there is a notebook with two fields, uh, the work day, so the, the, the prestations, uh, the, uh, the attendances and the absences, and also the other inputs. Work days is populated automatically according to the employee scheduler that we saw just before. So there is 14 days of attendance, uh, six days of time off, and two days of sick time off coming from the time of request that we just validated to be able to generate the pay slips. Uh, on the workdays model, you see that you have several fields that you can, you can use on the salary rule, the type, the description, the number of days, the number of hours, and the amount. In this case, uh, an annual time off is a pet time off, so it won't have any effect on the net salary, but you can configure the unpaid time off types on the salary structure by uh, itself to decrease the basic salary for these given months. For example, unforeseen uh, absences or uh, unpaid time off, etc. On the other hand, you see that there are um, other inputs uh, that can be used like uh, to define expense reports or salary attachments, you know, um, uh, an amount that is subtracted from the, the, the salary. For example, if you crash your car, etc. Et 
there are two fields on this model, the description and the amount, simple as that. On the second notebook page, you can see that you have all the payslip lines that were computed from the scheduler view. You may also want to adapt them manually before creating the accounting entries, but normally everything is correct. Could be adapted in case of corrections, for example. Uh, once it's validated, the PDF report is generated uh, by a cron, and then everything is done. If you have the document applications, the payslips are posted on the employee um, a folder. Uh, you can access it by the button My Profile on the top right. And here, as a payroll officer, I have access to all the payslips, naturally. Uh, it's very useful to find the document back, and also the content is indexed, so you can use the search bar to find declarations or specific documents. There is also um, a dashboard that can be used on a daily basis by the payroll officer. The first panel is sh showing warnings about the invalid employee situations. For example, there is a number of employees without a running contract, could be a configuration issue. There is some time off without joint documents when the time of type requires it. For example, a sick time off and you need a proof, a certificate. Uh, for example, the number of employees without a valid bank account, which could be uh, an issue if you want to pay them. The second panel show all the batches that were generated for the last three months so that you can easily spot what you have to do, what has been done, etc. The third panel uh, shows um, all the employer costs, like the social contributions, the company cars, the total net to be paid to the employees, etc. It's also uh, useful to find uh, if there is something wrong in the, the trends, you know. If one month you have twice the amount for the net salary, maybe there is an issue somewhere. And it's often useful to so see that measure. The fourth panel shows the employee trends, meaning the number of entrances and departures. And the last big panel on the right uh, um, is editable and it's, easy, it's useful when you want to leave some notes to your colleagues uh, to write down useful links, uh, external links or something you would like to bookmark, etc. Fine. Now, understanding US payroll regulation is crucial. We will start by providing um, a comprehensive overview on the um, uh, federal and uh, state payroll laws, <clears throat> and then we will see how we can uh, convert this into code. The payroll in the United States works in three different levels. You have federal taxes, state taxes, and local taxes. For all these levels, there is an income taxation plus other deductions that is requested by the law. Um, I won't explain everything, but you can you should know before that there are three taxes at the federal level, the uh, Fair Labor Standard Act, the Insurance Contribution Act, and the Unemployment Act. Those three taxes are applied on for all the employees in the United States because it's at the federal level. Then at the state level, for example, for uh, California, there are different taxes that are um, for the employer, other for the employees but you have to uh, compute all, all of them and then make different declarations to uh, declare the, the amount, all right? And at the local uh, level, there are, for example, in the un un New York uh, State, a local tax which is named the Metropolitan Commuter Transportation Mobility Tax, and it applies to different kind of employees if they are uh, working in, the un in New York State in several counties or not. It's not so important. All the amounts are not necessarily taxable according uh, if we are at the federal level or the state level. Here, it's a small summary uh, of the deductions that could be applied on different taxable basis. And it should be taken into account when you write the salary rules because you have to uh, exclude or include the different amounts that are exempted or not. So before jumping into the details, we need to prepare a little bit to know what are the objects that we will use. And we will discuss the necessary steps to take before the implementation to guide you uh, into a localization roadmap. So let's focus on the strategy for a gradual implementation for the, your payroll localization. 
This approach that we applied for Belgium, Switzerland, United States, Mexico, etc., will help you to ensure a smooth transition and minimize the disruptions. So here are the, the key steps. One, one step at a time. So the first tool is to uh, start slowly. Don't try to implement all the aspects of the payroll localization at once because it could be um, overwhelming and error prone. So start with the basics and build from there, right? Then start with the classic monthly pay. So just implement the basic monthly pay without any exceptions. The guy is working full time, no uh, sick time off, etc. Um, so it means that you will compute and process the standard monthly wage without being lost. You get the fundam these fundamental steps right before uh, doing complex elements. Then you have to write mandatory indication on the printed PDF payslip. Um, this ensures that your payroll documents comply with the local regulation, and it's often a legal requirement to include specific information. It could also, it could also be that you um, in, uh, generate the payslip in the employee language, for example, and you have the translated terms. All right. <clears throat> then you can gradually add complexity. So continuous improvement is the key to successful payroll um, localization. Once you master the basics, gradually, uh, gradually add complexity. So you could add additional deduction, allowances, bonuses, uh, commissions. Um, and also remember that the payroll regulation can change, so you have to stay adaptable as possible. Uh, then you have to test again and again and again and again. Uh, thorough testing um, is your best friend because testing your payroll system after every new implementation uh, helps you to catch errors and ensures that your solution remains accurate and compliant. So it means functionally and uh, technically testing. Then you can add your declarations. Um, to expand your system, you need to incorporate various tax declarations and reports. Uh, it could be monthly, quarterly, annual, etc. Then you can also integrate with remote services as we are doing currently for the Switzerland. So this could involve uh, connecting with tax authorities or financial institutions to streamline the processes like the tax payment and the direct uh, deposits. So to conclude, this gradual approach um, to payroll localization ensures a methodical and successful transition. So one step at a time, start with the monthly pay, add mandatory uh, indications, continuously improve, test rigorously, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now we are uh, ready to explore the technical aspects and discuss how we can use Odoo's modular uh, framework to integrate the US-specific payroll components. First, I will, I will introduce the different models that we use, and then I will show you practical implementation with the real use case of the US. The first object that you will use is the structured type. Uh, for example, it could be Belgium classic employee. On this model, you can define the default pay period. Is it paid um, daily, monthly, quarterly, etc. by default? Then you can define the default working calendar, 40 hours per week, for example. Uh, it's possible to, uh, for an employee to have a specific schedule, but globally, every new employee will follow this uh, planning. Then you can also define how the employee is paid. Is it based on the worked hour or uh, on a monthly basis? Then uh, you can choose the structure to use as a regular pay uh, because you can define a lot of different structure for the end of the year bonus commissions, etc. Now the second model of interest is the uh, payroll structure. Um, it contains all the rules that you could or should compute to create the pay slip lines and the name that will be given to the payslip. You can also define to take the work days into account or not, because for instance, uh, for the end of the year bonus, you don't really care about the work days that you did over the last months of the year, so you can get rid of this information and it shouldn't appear on the payslip. You can also define which work entry type won't be taken into account uh, into the net salary, for example, the unpaid leaves and the unforeseen absences. And then you can specify the specific input that will be added by default on the payslip when it's being generated. Here it's an example for the US monthly um, 
uh, structure. Now that we know what is a structure type and a structure, let's take a step further and discover what is the salary rule. On a rule, you can define a code like federal taxes, a name, a, can, a category, is it an allowance, a deduction, um, and so on. You can choose to display the payslip line in the PDF report or not, because some lines are technical and you want to show them to the employee, or some lines are um, only for the company, uh, if it's a company uh, contribution. You can define the condition to apply the rule or not, and also the rules um, to compute the amount uh, on the, to compute the amount on the payslip line. You can also choose the accounting journal, journal on which you will post this amount and specify a contributor to ease the reconciliation uh, when you uh, make the real uh, payment. So, about the applicabili applicability of the rule, there are different ways to do it. Either the rule is always applied or it's based on a field and a particular range. For example, if the basic salary is between zero and a thousand dollars, apply my rule. Um, it could be an employment bonus, for example, to decrease the taxes for the employee with a low salary. If the first uh, two ways to apply your rule are not sufficient for your complex situation, you can still define the applicability by writing a small chunk of Python code. For the rule computation, there are, there are uh, also several ways to define it. Either it's a, it's a fixed amount, either it's a percentage based on the field. For example, 30% of the gross salary, or it's computed by a Python code. And the quantity uh, can be defined by using everything, either an amount or a Python code. Now, let's take a look at real examples to see what it's like. Uh, for the health care, um, uh, it's a fixed amount that is subtracted from the gross salary and is sent to the insurance company. So the amount is applied on all the pay slips that are covered by the insurance program. The amount to retrieve is defined on the employee contract. You have the field on the left and you say, I will contribute $10 every month for the HSA, for example, uh, contribution. Um, the taxable income is lower that way, which is one of the main reasons why employees are so eager to benefit from that advantages in the United States. Technically, it's quite simple. We just need to add a monetary field on the contract uh, model. A monetary field is basically a float field uh, that is used just to display the currency. Then we would like to regroup all the health benefits under the same category for uh, reporting purposes. Let's call this category uh, pre-tax benefits with a code to easily identify it. Here we set a parent category to it, which is a standard deduction. Uh, the reason why we do this is because the net salary is computing but by taking the basic salary plus all the allowances plus all the uh, deductions. And if you say that the category is a deduction, this amount is automatically subtracted um, on the net salary. So you don't have to adapt the net rule to say, okay, I have to remove this amount. So if you set the correct um, um, salary rule category, everything will be taken into account when uh, computing the net amount. Okay, then we have to define a new salary rule. So let's di discover the parameter one by one. Uh, the category is the pre-tax benefit that we just defined. Then we set a friendly name, medical, a code, and a sequence. The sequence uh, is chosen to be computed just after the growth and before the net salary. Then we define a Python condition so, to, uh, so that the rule is actually computed, which is true if the field is defined on the contract and uh, has been filled with a positive value. All right? Then the result is computed using the code by setting the result as the negative amount uh, of the health benefit amount uh, on the contract. And finally, we link the rule to the monthly pay structure and it's done. So it's quite easy to add uh, a rule just by defining data, all right? Now, let's take another example, which is a little bit more complex. A sales commission is the sum of um, uh, money paid to the employee upon completion of a task, usually selling a certain amount of goods and uh, services. Employers sometimes use sales commission as an incentive to increase uh, employee productivity. So it means that it's not regular. 
Uh, it's, it depends on um, the employee performances. So in that case, the commission is an input that has to be encoded by hand each time uh, the commissions are paid, for example, every quarter. So for that, use, for that use case, we will use the additional other inputs that uh, we saw a few slides before. You see that I decided to grant $5,000 of commission to my employee in addition to the uh, $3,600 uh, of basic salary. And when we compute the payslip, the amounts are simply summed and the payslip is computed accordingly. So the, the tax, uh, for example, the federal tax is computed uh, by taking into account the uh, sum of the commission and the basic salary. But from a technical point of view, how uh, sh should we proceed? We need to define an input type so that the salary rule can easily retrieve the corresponding amount. So you see that here we, de we defined an input with a code, a name, and we restrict it to the uh, United States country and also the specific um, structure of the monthly pay so that it's not able to use it on uh, end of the year bonus or in a Belgian company, for instance. Then we have to define the rule itself. You see that it's under the standard allowance category, so it will be summed on the gross amount in that case. Uh, there is a name, a code, a sequence like before. And then the rule is applied, if you check the condition Python, uh, Python field, is applied only if the commission code is present on the payslip input. For the people who already worked a little bit in the payroll application on Odoo, note that the input object is not a browsable object anymore, which was, which was a, a magic uh, class object. Uh, it has been removed in 17 version for uh, simplicity purpose. Oh, all right. So, when the input is on the payslip, the rule is applied and we retrieve the amount by saying input inside bracket commission, then uh, dot amount. And we take back also the, the name so that the description of the input is displayed on the payslip. Um, all right. Now, let's see a third example. Uh, the 401 key is a feature in the United States uh, which is a qualified profit sharing plan that allows the employees to contribute to a portion of their wage in uh, individual accounts. It can be a fixed amount or a percentage. And in that case, we need to have two fields on the employee contract. First, a field containing the related amount, and then a selection to choose between uh, if it is a percent or a fixed amount. With these two fields, it's easy. And then the maximum contribution is capped at $22,500. This value is, oh, it's not me. Ah, it's, it's over? Okay. Um, it's, it's not much passing, but I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This value is only valid uh, for a specific year and you can define this value and reuse it on the rule. So I will show you just the, the computation rule so that you see that a more complex example. Here to compute the amount, we will um, compute the expected contribution. If the type is in percent, the related percentage uh, is used. Otherwise it's fixed and then we take the, the fixed amount directly. Then we will search all the pay slips over the year because it's capped based on the, the global amount. And uh, we, th we search all the pay slips for the specific employee that are in done or pet states uh, to be sure that we don't include pay slips from somebody else. Then uh, we retrieve all the total amounts for the preview, previous pay slip in a single request calling this method, get line values, that allows you to uh, retrieve all the values at once without doing sums, etc., because it's handled. Then we will retrieve the cap value by using rule parameter. Uh, I expected to show you that, but okay, you can see the, the slides afterwards. And then according if we already, um, if you are above the cap or not, we will compute the amount that should be applied on the payslip. So you see that for something that could be complex in a few lines of code, you can achieve the rule computation uh, quite easily because everything is there to help you. Uh, voilà. I will skip the last example and if you wish, um, 
tup, tup, tup. There is also a section about the link with accounting. So how can I link my salary rules into uh, accounts so that the um, global pay slips are declared in your accounting uh, in the credit, correct credit and debit account, and also anonymized. In some countries, it's a legal requirement to anonymize the accounting entries. It's also possible, and you can pay all the employees at once by generating a SIPA file. But if you are not in the SIPA zone, or if you don't want to use it, you can also generate uh, the accounting entries one by one, for employee by employee, and then register payments as in the expense applications, for example. So you can pay half by cash, half by check, etc. And the payslip is marked as paid as the total amount is fully reconciled. All right. And then I've added a section, but I won't explain it because I don't have uh, enough time. But there is a section about how to define your test suit to ensure the quality insurance with examples of um, the payslip results. You can compare some payslips in um, complex situations and then compare it directly. And so the, the way it's defined is quite fast and you can maybe validate 500 payslips and the tests are uh, launched easily because there is a snapshot that you can use to, to generate all the needed data. And that's what we do also for the Belgian or uh, Switzerland localization. <clears throat> okay, so thank you for listening to me. And if, if you have any question, I'm still there uh, today and tomorrow. No? Yeah. And if I can add a comment, if you would like also to um, develop your own localization for your country, we are available to do it because we already worked with partners like uh, for Switzerland um, and we defined all the, um, the localization. It's a win-win uh, con contribution because we don't have the knowledge, but maybe you don't have the resources or the time or the, the, allez, all the knowledge to do it and so we can help uh, each other and then it's our responsibility to maintain and make the module evolve if we make um, some modifications so if you are interested into that you can also contact me uh, by email or whatever all right the Spanish one is, uh, hard. <laughs> yeah. but we we intend to do it because we would like to develop all the localization for the countries in which we have a, a nodu company and now we have offices in Valencia. And so we are discussing with the, um, the HR over there to gather all the knowledge about that. And it looks like it's a little bit complex, but uh, I think it's okay. And uh, there is a task to do it. So we can talk we later can to, uh, for our general um, uh, overall, um, uh, uh, all the aspects to have into account. So, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I would, I'm eager uh, into that. So thank you, Yannick. Thank very you very interesting. much. <laughs>